there it is, what is probably one of the most underrated Spongebob games. Now why exactly do I say that? Well, let's start this review off with the story for the game. Now this story takes place within the dreams of Spongebob, Patrick, and Plankton, as they all dream of, I guess, their deepest desires, like Spongebob being a race car driver, Patrick being a superhero, and Plankton finally getting a Krabby Patty. But things start to go wrong in these dreams, like Spongebob being swallowed up by the Alaskan bollworm, or Plankton's Krabby Patty coming to life and trying to eat him. And well, after a series of events, all three dreams kind of combine in on each other, and now the three of them have to find a way to escape the dream. And well, that brings us to what I would assume is the big draw of this game. That being the fact that each dream kind of has its own different play style. I mean, yes, this game still has elements of 3D platforming in it, where you run around, defeat enemies, and collect items and whatnot. But I would actually say for most other times you won't be doing this. You'll instead be doing stuff like racing, or flying a rocket or even as Plankton like becoming gigantic and destroying Bikini Bottom. And then even on top of that there's mini games that you play throughout. So yeah, this game tries to be like a jack of all trades by dipping its hand into a little bit of everything. And you might argue that the game is doing too much because of that and the levels aren't gonna pan out as good as they thought it would be, but honestly no, this game is good. It doesn't really fail on anything it sets out to do. And that kind of pretty quickly wraps up the gameplay so I'm gonna go over other stuff with this game now. Starting with the positives, and I'll start here with the graphics. And although overall I personally see the graphics as a downgrade when compared to Battle for Bikini Bottom or the movie game, I can't deny this game's like artistic creativity with it. Because the game kind of makes up for it by having the levels have different like styles to them. Because in Spongebob's dream everything looks punk, everything in Patrick's dream looks like a comic book, and then everything in Plankton's Dream looks like a 50s B-movie. Alright, next we have the music for this game, which, just like the game itself, I feel is very underrated. Because not only does the music, like, perfectly encapsulate each level, like in the first one when you're driving a Spongebob, there's this really great rockin' track that's, like, seven minutes long and it's just great all the way through. Or how the music of the last level, like, successfully encapsulates all the chaos that's going on. But I definitely gotta say that my personal favorite thing about the music in this game is that in certain levels, depending on what part of it you're in, the music will end up changing. Like for example, when you're getting chased as Plankton from the Krabby Patty, the farther you get into that level, the more intense the music gets. And like, the more instruments like start joining into the groove. And again, that's just one example, there's multiple instances of this throughout the game, and I just think that's really cool. I mean, they really didn't need to make multiple versions of these songs, but they did it anyway. Uh, what else do I like about this game? Oh, the store. Yeah, throughout the game you'll be constantly picking up these little things called Sleepy Z's that can be later used at a store. And in the store you'll pay like a hundred Sleepy Z's in order to get something random. And I believe what stuff you can end up getting is like music from the game that you could listen to, or like posters, or even um, alternate costumes. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, another aspect about this game I actually kind of like is how like self-contained it feels. Like, to properly explain that, in other Spongebob games, they try to get as many characters into them as possible. And, well, there's nothing really wrong with that, it's just that you don't really see a game where it's only three, like, vocal characters. Like, other characters get mentioned, like Squidward and Mr. Krabs, but they don't actually appear in the game. And then on top of this, it's, like, just an odd set of characters, Spongebob, Patrick, and Plankton. And it's also, like, cool how they're all in their own individual separate stories that all come together right at the end. And uh, speaking of the ending to this game, a bit of a spoiler warning here, I find it really cool that you can get different ones. Yeah, throughout the game you can pick up these little things that are called Sleepy Seeds that are shaped like Patrick and Plankton. And if you manage to collect all of them, you are then able to play as either Patrick or Plankton in the last level. And each character has their own different ending. So yeah, that's pretty cool and I believe also unique because I can't think of any other Spongebob game with multiple endings. And well, that just about wraps up all the positive things I had to say about this game. So now we'll move on to the negatives of this game. Or I guess I really should rephrase that as negative, because I really only have one true gripe against this game. And that being related to the fact that this game only has nine levels. And some of these levels are actually quite short, they could be beaten within like 20 to 30 minutes. And so the issues of there being very few levels, combined with there being very short levels, 
equals into what I don't like about this game. That being that certain other levels try to overcorrect this by simply dragging on for way too long, like one to two hours, maybe even three. Like levels one, two, and four, especially two, take way too long to play through. And honestly, for me at least, this kind of drags down the game experience, especially with all these long levels being at the beginning of the game and not like spread throughout. But at least at the end of the day, you don't have to play through them all at once. You get checkpoints, you quit out, you can go back to those checkpoints. So yeah, bad enough to leave a stain on the game, but not bad enough to like sink the whole ship. But anyway, that's really all I gotta say about this game. So yeah, for the most part, this is definitely a solid Spongebob title that definitely deserves more love. Yay! Thank you for trying, Patrick, old pal. But it looks like we've made it to Shangri-La. 